Hello and welcome to HyperDog Digital. This is Scott. Today we're going to take a look at the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 tablet. This is the third generation of this device. Uh, the ThinkPad X1 tablet is another device that is very similar in design to the Surface tablets. Uh, the cost for this is a little over $1,200 uh, to a little over $2,000 depending on the configuration that you get. Uh, there are three different variations that you can get with this. Um, now this is primarily primarily designed as a business device uh, but it can certainly be used as a home device very easily as well. Um, first impression so a very well built sturdy device with a large screen and decent weight and I'll kind of open this up here a little bit for you so you can see the, the screen and it is uh, one that has one of these uh, the detachable keyboard as well here. Uh, its casing is made of a magnesium aluminum hybrid material that gives it a nice uh, metallic feel. Uh, it it is, certainly feels very sturdy and according to Lenovo it has been tested against 12 military grade certification tests and 200 in-house durability tests. Uh, I am not going to test that however as this is just a demo unit and I don't feel like paying for it if I break it. As always my kids did get some time with it and the tablet managed to survive unscathed so that is always a good sign as well. Uh, taking a look at uh, the ports that we have on here, uh, you have a, a power button and a volume rocker and then this right here is the pen pro slot and we'll take a look at that uh, a little bit later. On the left side <clears throat> you have a micro SD nano sim slot uh, we will also talk about that as well. Uh, you have uh, two uh, Thunderbolt 3 or uh, USB Type-C ports. Uh, one of these is, uh, is of course used for charging. Uh, you have a Kensington lock and then you have the uh, the audio jack. Um, on the back uh, you have uh, the camera. That is an 8 megapixel camera. And then you have the, uh, the always useful kickstand here. Uh, on the front you have uh, dual speakers uh, which are down here. There's one here not sure if you can see it too well and there's one over here there's a fingerprint reader right here and then you have your camera two megapixel camera here at the top uh, the keyboard is nice and feels uh, very sturdy itself um, it's, a, it's got a very strong magnet as most of these uh, generally do uh, the back uh, the buttons are backlit and it's good size uh, of course I do love the backlit uh, keyboard anytime that's uh, that's included um, there are uh, uh, some smaller than standard keyboard keys uh, like the, uh, the the arrow keys or the function keys uh, but uh, you know really that's it's not too big a deal uh, everything else feels very good when, when you're typing on it um, the buttons are recessed a bit so that they don't touch the screen when it's closed uh, much like most of these uh, types of devices the keyboard has two levels to use which is the take a look here just the flat like that or elevated when you pop it up like that and I'll show you from the side there or you can have it just flat like this or it'll magnetize up there so it's a little bit elevated and a little bit easier to type on. Overall it's a good solid design though I do miss some of the cosmetic touches uh, of some of the devices like the Mix 520 from Lenovo. Specifically, I'm, I'm referencing the watch band hinge. Um, really, they, they do function about the same. I just think the watch band hinge looks a lot cooler. Uh, beyond that, everything fits together nicely. The, the buttons don't protrude from the sides, and there's just enough ports to do what you need to do. Uh, I am not a fan of the SIM tray for the SD card, however. Uh, for me, if I'm using an SD card, I like to be able to swap those out rather quickly when necessary. And having a SIM tray that requires a tool or a paper clip to remove it is just a hassle. I don't really mind it for the SIM card as you don't generally remove those frequently, but for an SD card, I think it's an odd choice. Uh, I'm also not a huge fan of the Pen Pro slot, uh, which is on this side here. Uh, and I'll show you real quick that uh, this is how the little pen and the pen holder just kind of slides in right there and then this goes right there um, as I said I'm not I'm not a big fan of it while it is an improvement over using the USB slot for the holder as some of the other models have uh, it still just adds some kind of hinky piece of plastic sticking out of the side that's just asking you to get caught on something 
The pen is too big to hide within the tablet, so this is probably the next best option, but it still just really drives me crazy. Uh, the pen itself is what seems like kind of a scaled down version of the Lenovo Active Pen. There's no button on top, um, uh, but it still has a rocker button near the tip. Um, but uh, other than that, there's really not a whole lot else to it. It does run off of just a AAA battery, which you can get to just by unscrewing this guy right here. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at some of the actual specs of this device. Okay, so as I mentioned, you do have three different configurations you can choose from, which vary in price and slight configuration changes. Those changes are primarily in the processor, memory, disk, and accessories uh, that come with the tablet. Um, it does utilize Intel's 8th gen Cabby Lake R processors, which is designed to run on less wattage and not lose processing power. Uh, Windows 10 Pro, uh, up to 16 gig of RAM, and up to one terabyte of local disk. The front camera is a two megapixel camera, while the back is eight megapixel. All models have a uh, very nice, uh, very very crisp 13-inch Quad HD IPS display with re resolution of 3,000 by 2,000, and uh, is also using uh, Gorilla Glass 4. Uh, and uh, an Intel UHD 620 graphics card. Uh, it's using a 42 watt hour battery which uh, is read to have up to 9.5 hours of battery life. Weight wise the tablet and keyboard is just under 3 pounds while the tablet itself is just under 2. So overall the performance was really good. I'm not going to spend a lot of time here as this will vary depending on what model uh, and the configuration you end up going with. Uh, the particular model that I was sent had the i7 processor and 16 gig of RAM, so I had no problems running anything I needed uh, with this uh, device. Uh, now keep in mind this is designed as a business device and with the simple Intel UHD 620 graphics card you're not going to use this as a gaming machine. Uh, battery life was pretty much as advertised. I took this to work with me a couple times and after an eight hour day of moderate to heavy usage here and there, I was down to an average of about 30% battery life. Uh, that's not too bad, uh, but you certainly want to have a charger with you if you're going to be doing any kind of you know, movie marathon or uh, binge watching something on Netflix with this all day long. Uh, the keyboard itself works very well and I don't have any real gripes about using it that I don't already have about uh, these floppy keyboards. It's great if you're setting it on a desk or flat surface, but I just can't get used to using it on my lap yet like I would a traditional laptop. Uh, the cameras are uh, decent for a tablet, but really aren't anything fancy. Uh, they take decent enough pictures, but you're likely going to have something far superior on your phone and would probably be better off using that to take uh, a bunch of pictures. Alright, so in the end, the uh, Lenovo ThinkPad X1 tablet is, uh, I think, a very solid, sturdy two-in-one that is clearly built around business use and does not, and does, excuse me, does a good job in that role. Uh, that said, it will have absolutely no problems working as a great home use device as well. It's got plenty of power and versatility to handle whatever you want to throw at it uh, within those roles. My only real problems with the device are primarily cosmetic, uh, the SIM card tray and the pen holder. So if you're looking for a solid device that you can use at work or at home as a laptop or a true tablet, then I'd recommend taking a good look at the third gen ThinkPad X1 tablet. Again, there are three different configurations you can choose from, with prices ranging from a little over $1,200 to just over $2,000. Uh, I hope this video has been helpful to you, and if it has, please give us a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel, channel for future videos. You can see more videos on our YouTube channel or on our website at www.hyperdogdigital.com. This is a demo unit, so I'll have it. I'll have to be. I'll have it for a little bit, but I'll, we'll be sending it back soon. Uh, so if you do have questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. And if I can, I will do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again next time at Hyperdog Digital.